Hi, welcome back to Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome back to Paint It Simply. We're going to be doing today some uh, wildflowers and a little bee here. I have a little, um, I have my 11 by 14 panel, which uh, you've seen a thousand times here, hopefully. It, it's uh, the Super MDF one I like, and I've just given it a coat of medium white. And usually what I do is I cut up a bunch of these panels. We get big sheets of this, and uh, it's not expensive at all. And then we just give it all a coat of medium white, sometimes medium white in sealer. And um, you have a lot to practice on, a lot of fun paintings. Plus, they're, it's a very good, stable ground uh, to paint on. And um, you can uh, just go right ahead and frame them, too. They're beautiful that way. So I'm going to imagine a little uh, wildflower and bee right up here. We'll just move our palette. I'm going to be using my same painted simply colors that I've used so many times here. My uh, cool red, which is red violet, Napolo red light, Hunsa yellow, Thalo blue, black and white, some green, and I also have out some burnt sienna over there too. Been adding the burnt sienna and the green lately just to uh, get some other color variations. Some of our teachers wanted to have some medium greens, so we can do that. So uh, let's go in here first, and I'm going to, since I'm going to have a little beef line in this, we'll make a little sky color up here. So let's uh but let's get our sky color here a little bit towards the violety kind of sides here so i'll take a little thalo blue look we'll take a big old dollop of our white and a little bit of red violet into that and um we'll thin that out here with some uh extender and stuff and let's just come in here and let's just put we'll put the bee coming in over here on this side the right side this time why not what the heck Let's put it over here. So we'll put a little bit of color up over there. A little bit of this down in here. This light color down in through here. I'm gonna take my my uh, paper towel and just move through some of this and just move it around and thin it up on it. I don't wanna to get too heavy on the surface there. I like the vignette too. I like that look of vignetting and stuff. And I got a little edge of dark there, so. You can even just take some light color onto this like this and and walk it in like this as well. That just gives you just lovely movement into your background. And that's what I want. It's just variation and interest stuff to the backgrounds, to the colors here. I want some stuff going on. I like that. Sometimes I'll take that paper towel and just kind of, you know, move colors and stuff around in here like this too. It's just good variation, you know, so nothing is is always the same. Let's take some of our Hansa and some greens right down into here. And let's let's get us, you know, some good wildflower greens down here. And uh, we'll let some of this come out a little bit. And again, we'll move this around here. Let these colors and this greens come out like this. Move some of them down through here like that. You know, you can take this and and again, just take some of this and just move some of this through. You know, even with your paper towel, it just loosens it up and gets it some, some nice green movements in there. Okay. We're just going to have some fields of wildflowers and stuff coming through here. Let's go, uh, I'm going to grab, uh, you can start out with, well, let's just do it with this one first. You can use a large variety, and that's what I always say, is we like to keep casual and moving and pow and... And I don't like to always, you know, set up a, you know, a routine of doing something. So, you know, even grabbing that paper towel helps you break that routine. That's what you're doing. I'll use my bigger brush here just to start it out. I was going to grab a smaller one. I thought, no, let's just do the big one. That'll break that routine here. Let's put some more greens. Let's get some of that pine green, maybe a little blue into that here. Let's get some of those greens down through here. Let's use the chisel of our brush here. And just lightly suggest some nice movement here for uh, some of these wildflower stems and stuff coming down and through and out and movement out. Colors bang out. You know, the stem leaves kind of stuff coming out here. You know, imagine a whole field of these things just boom out like that. And, uh, that's what I that's what I try to imagine here, and you know you're the you're the artist you're the creator you'll let these things just go and and I can never go back and copy any of the stuff that I do again because it's too casual you know and I don't want to I want to paint something new next time 
So, you know, I just let it happen. Let's take a little bit of black into that, a little bit more blue into that. And let's just develop a, a nice contrasting color right here into the center, right back up in here. You know, some of that green and stuff we have going here. Uh, we'll create some, maybe a little stem that breaks down like that, a little, and I'm using my number eight now. And I'll get a little more drawing with some of this here, some more stems down. And uh, maybe we'll put a few little stems out here like this and some broken ones, little things going up, you know, so, so we'll have some different looks to it. Now, uh, let's start taking some colors down here, okay? So let's, you know, one color I need to use a little bit more of, according to my daughter, is orange. So I will start this one out with a little orange. What the heck? And uh, let's come in and let's make like a little, like a little poppy open or closed up kind of poppy here. We'll put the orange into the back here. We'll put uh, a little bit of a, we'll model this Hansa and the red. It makes beautiful orange. This is how paint companies, they take those two colors, they mix them together and that's how they make um, vermilion. They take Hansa yellow and uh, the uh, naphtha red, and that's how they make vermilion uh, color. So let's just drop a couple of these little orange guys right here, here, and here like that. Those would be pretty. Maybe we'll make one, one right down here as well. So that color carries over here. That's kind of pretty. So it goes right over there and over there. We'll darken that just a bit. Maybe tone it just a bit. A little bit of that green. I'll just slide right into that. See how that tones that over a, a touch. And uh, get a little bit of a darker, more toned orange. And that's because it'll be away from the light. That's what we'll put the fronts of these in with. Here like that. And we might want to have a little bit uh, more of a red or so, so the color varies just a little here. We'll stroke those on like that. Let's tone that up a bit here. Let's imagine this one here, right in there like that. Maybe comes up here and joins in on that one there. You can also stroke in reverse here like this and put the edges of that in. But I will want a little bit of streaking in it. So I'll come back and stroke it a little bit because we want a little streaking in them. Okay, we maybe want to pick up a little bit of more yellow here. And let's just touch into a little bit of that yellow just to streak down into them like that. Okay, so some of these right in there streak into that. That gives you a little variation. Maybe a touch of that yellow, boom, right up from the bottom there. A little base, a little bright. I love to do that on roses and stuff, so why not put it on the base of the poppy here too? It's just, it's, you're just looking for nice streaks of color. Pull this down here. Yeah, like that, that's good. This one over here, let's put a streak of red at the very bottom of it. A little brighter red. And that'll be nice. Nice variation there. But we'll put a little bit of yellow streaking right out there at the tip of that, right like that. And those are kind of pretty. Little ones in there. Let's do some let's do some violet colors. Yeah, let's get some violets. I don't uh, let's do some colors that I don't normally do with these little wildflowers. So we'll get some violets in there. And uh, let's play some of this violet around. Violet color, violets, oranges here. 
play those. Just kind of imagine these like little, well, they could be anything, little cosmos type flowers or daisy type flowers here. We'll imagine a couple of them coming down over here. Maybe one or two of them here, like that. Bright little guys. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Let's put a little bit of brightness right from the, the centers out here. There, like that. The centers out here. Like that. We'll take a little bit, little bit darker. And let's just pull in from the tip of this in here so we'll pull a little bit of different color in there as a pretty just fun little flowers so light First start with a medium, then put some light color down at the, down the, with the medium color, then light color from the inside out. Then we'll come in and, and just pull some dark from the tip and lifting the brush off right away. We got some pretty little flowers here. Nice variation to these little flowers here. Boom, like that. Boom. Those are pretty, and uh, those we can give like a, a little toned center, or like a little yellow center. Let's first take some burnt sienna, and we'll just drop some of that in there. The little poppies, like they're closed up, they can't see anything in there. So then we'll take a little bit of Hansa We'll tap into some of those. Normally I don't paint flowers to completion like this. You know, I, I work the whole design around and I got a little too much of that Hansa there. I'm just gonna push it out of the way with a little bit of the burnt sienna. But um, you can do it this way too, this works. They're just kind of fun to add. We'll add uh, little calyx type things here with that one and uh, little calyx strokes little ideas of stems coming through here this will add a heck of a lot more flowers into this and you can come back and revisit these uh, you know anyway as you're putting some of these in you can revisit some of those but uh, maybe we'll have a little uh, red blossom Flower right in here, turned right in here. It's kind of pretty, let's give it a dark little center of red violet. Here, that's nice. We'll get a little more red here. Just various colors here, just kind of turn this around here. That's kind of beautiful there. Let's put a little burnt sienna right in that center right with that red violet. And then we'll tap a little Hansa yellow around that center. There we go. And we might want to make a, just a little bit of an orange yellow here. Just as a a little variation there for that red right there like that let's make a little more toned one so we just touch it right into a little bit of that green the red right into a little green that'll tone that down and let's just push a little bit of that color like right back up in here a little softer so that the viewer the viewer will see a little bit of that back there maybe a little bit of that back in here You'll see the idea of those, uh, of those colors. 
back there. You can maybe see an idea of it back in here. Very soft here. So that red, maybe there was something there. Let's bring that edge out though of that little poppy here. There we go. So that sits up in front of that. You can see some of that red through there. Maybe a little bit of the brightness there. There like that. And let's get into some, I love white flowers, white daisy type flowers. Let's just take all of our colors that we have right here, reds and greens and some blues and some violets here. Let's mix them all up together here and you get a kind of a gray. That's a beautiful gray to start whites with because it makes your whites, everything go together with those whites. So they're beautiful flowers to go together. Here, beautiful, just a little bouquet of wildflowers here. And we'll pull some of the whites. Let's uh, take some of our yellows into that first. We'll put some yellows into that just to move some of that color around here. That's pretty. And uh, we'll take a, take a little burnt sienna, maybe a little red violet. We'll say, okay, my centers will be there and there. And there, that'll give me my centers. Now that paint's really kind of wet here. So I might and sometimes when it gets so wet because there's so much going on in there I go to lay white on and it's not going to stick it's just going to roll a little bit on me so uh, we're going to let that just tack up for just a second we'll come out here and we'll start adding a few more little uh, little things of movement of color and leaves and stuff out here and ideas of those little movements here Little wildflowers, just a fun little thing with wildflowers. Very different. Different for me, at least. Love some of this, this variation that we, we can get with the painted simply like this. Let's get a little bit of color here. little um, touches of, you know, we'll, we'll model some of the pine green and some yellows together here. Get some of these little leaf colors in here. We'll add just a bit of blue to that to make some darker ones and darker t color tones and touch a little bit of that in every once in a while. A little variation, just model these greens. Some of these variations and we might come back and revisit some of these flowers to add some more variations of color uh, to them for example I may not even clean my brush just pick up some of this red violet right in here let's just come back and touch a little bit of this one here and that'll put a little more color variation on this one maybe a little more color variation here on that one there A little bit of red color variation in it. You can push, you know, and this is where I really like to paint flowers, is to take and push with my finger in and out a little bit to grab some of that movement and everything. That's what makes it very artistic is that pushing that I like to do there. just gives you some real soft edges and and you know to the flowers which we like to have sometimes these soft edges now let's come in and let's grab some of this white here we can have a touch of yellow in that but 
just model up this dirty white here. And let's go in and let's paint our white kind of daisy colors here. We want to do quick strokes in here. Quick strokes in like this. Quick strokes in. Okay. And we'll do one almost like a middling, what we call the middling flower here. So it's pulling out from the center like that. We'll, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll angle some of these down here. So we'll imagine them angling down like that. And to do that, we'll, we'll do that and then we'll chisel the top up here like this so that the bottom side here is that way and then it comes down like that. And we'll pull some of that back up out of the center. Take your finger, make sure it's clean, and lift off that center and see you get that lovely movement that that flower sitting down at that angle there. And I love to paint these like this angle. And if you've watched a lot of these videos and stuff, you'll see that that's how I like to do these angles and pull and, and, and use my finger like that and really make sure that the front of this flower has the texture of the white on it. That is what will bring it forward. Okay. And we can texture those little tips out onto some of these here. We can pull some of it out, push it back in. Push and pull it in and out. That's what I like to do with these. I like to push them in and out a little bit. And, I'll, and I don't mind resetting this several times, resetting some of these colors several times here. In other words, stroke them again and again as I set these colors in here. Let's set right up here a real soft little white one. I love those whites to travel. They're the lightness of the of the painting of the composition. You know, they're the light bit of it, and I just got to get that back in there a little bit. Too much there. There we go. That's a pretty little one. Just little guys showing up back out in through here. Little one showing up to here. We were going to do another smaller one chiseled up here like this. And then pulling down. Two of them pulling down here like that. I think I'll, I'll pull. Let's, let's do this a little different. Let's set this one, let that one come back here so we'll pull a little bit of light out like this. We'll let the tip of this one go a little bit softer just by running your finger back and forth there, a little bit like that. Then we'll pick up some more white right on the tip this way and we'll bring this one in like this so it is actually looking a little different than this other one here. And that's the kind of, that's what you want to do as the artist is you want to, you know, here we'll dip this down a bit and we'll just bring that around like that. And you want to get these different looks to them. Here like that. Let's build some more white right in here. Okay, like that. That's pretty. Pretty little wildflowers there. We'll take a little bit of our, let's take some of our burnt sienna, tap those into that, tap that into that center. Sometimes I'll, I'll work that in and out of that center as well. So I get some color traveling in and out. There. There we go. We'll take a corner of our light. We'll start right where we want it the lightest, the Hansa yellow, right where we want it the lightest. And I'm going to build this though mostly into the center so that it builds up the center 
And then we'll walk out and around like that. Yeah. Just a little touches, very lightly touching the surface, going further out there, but a little bit more into the center here. And a little like here, we'll raise the center up like this and then let it just head down, get a little darker as it goes in there. Let's build this one back up a bit, a little bit more. Yeah, like that. Here. Grab a little bit here, we'll put it right onto that top. And it's not softening out enough for me, so I'll just tap it, take some of it off, maybe even put a little burnt sienna into the brush and just lightly tap through to put that edge in that one. You can come through, like here, we can take some of this violet color, which I like, and we can just, let's just put some of that right here in our brush, this violet color, and just lift off with a little bit of that violet right in here. That will carry and travel that violet color right into this daisy. You can just come right out there like that. So you can pull some of that color right out here, right onto these. We can stroke some of that right onto like the bottom sides of these little poppy type things. There. Let's get a little green going here and a little brighter yellow green here. So we got those kind of flowers there. We should have some, uh, you know, one of the things that makes the flower painting very pretty is to have some of the um, flowers show up very ghosty, transparent. So let's just take a couple of these uh, like white ones here and just push down here. Maybe have them show up a little bit more ghosty down here. Maybe a little bit to the center. A little idea of the center. Very, very soft. Here. And I'm just tapping in a little bit, like just revisiting my light here. Then we'll go back to that yellow green here in just a second. Here. I don't quite like that petal, so I'm gonna pull back like this and take some of that off and reset it in there. That's better. It's a better look to that petal. Yeah, I like that. And we can swoop that a little bit. Here. Let that come underneath that one. Yeah, like that. Go back up. Uh, let's revisit some of the fronts of these poppies here and make sure we have a nice dose of red and tone color that we really see the front from the back. There we go. Just like that. Those are kind of pretty. And, um, then we'll take some of our nice bright yellow green and we want to move through some of these uh, brighter yellow green here. Just little touches of that through here. Bright, bright. But it would be, you know, they have all kinds of some bright yellow, yellow greens, blue greens, all kinds of bright little colors. Yeah. Brightening up the day here. Brightening up the day here. Let's 
take a little stroke or two of that here at the base. Now we'll uh, come back and I'm going to push back. We'll go back into some of our sky color here. I'm just going to come around over here. Let's take a little sky color, violet color. I'm going to push back some of that height of this one up here, right in this area here. Push it back a little bit. I don't have to have the same color. As a matter of fact, I don't want to have exactly the same color. And that's one of, you know, a lady wrote me one time and asked me, she said, I, I'm so afraid to use the heritage because I'm so afraid I can't make the same color. I never make the same color twice. I paint for variation. I brush mix for variation, not for consistency. If I wanted to paint consistency, I'd go buy a whole bunch of bottles of color. But we paint for variation here. So I want to have some of these variations to the color. You know, that's what's going to make the painting interesting. And you can't make a wrong color because everything you're going to make is going to go together here. Because it has the same, uh, same limited palette. That's why artists use the limited palette, so they go together. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about making the same color. I think that that's one of the sad things of what's happened to decorative painting industry is that bottle colors came in there and everyone, and bottle colors did great things for us. They allowed us to to paint, There's some people to paint. We would almost cookbook paint. You know, this color goes here and there, and and uh, it, they allowed for that. They allowed this 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 to happen so we were able to to teach you know so many different things but it, it did something that was very bad also is it made people think that they have to always have the same color and I don't I never do so and we don't we want to get away from that so now I'm just going to move some of this color down and around um, I want to uh, uh, these bluish kind of colors here and greens and stuff I want to I'm going to gray these down a bit here. Let's just take some of this color and uh, let's push it down through here a little bit more. Let's get some of this color down through here and get some of these other colors down through. Work those colors in there. Um, let's get some of the darks here. Beautiful dark colors that Make a you know, make a some of that dark color movement and stuff that we get here. There we go. Down and through here like that. That nice dark color movement. Let's add some of that over here to this kind of bluish color. Get some of this dark green color. And get some of that movement down here like this. Down. There, like that, and down, and through, moving through here. Streak through some of the light. I do a lot of what I call, uh, in, in a painting now, a lot of what I call fracturing, which is taking and moving color like this through, and it just breaks up, just breaks up movements and colors here. Just using the color of the brush like this. And, and I just love that extra movement that it adds a painting like this. Just adds so much extra stuff. And I love that, that movement, that energy that it adds into there. So we'll fracture a little bit of that up. There, like that. Just grab some of that. There, and let's uh, get some more dark here. And a little bit of extender with that, just to and we'll pull this dark side down here. We'll move that, move this. You know, sometimes I'll come in a negative paint. This is just a real casual painting here. But sometimes I'll take that and it, I can come in like this in negative paint and really make that look like a little blossom there. That's a little too much of an edge, but you can come in and do that, and that just works wonderful. We can just drop some of this down through like that. So we'll get a nice high and low here of this, and some of this through our, in that area right in there, gives a, 
some extra. You can determine if you want to have a little more contrast by, before we go put our B in here, by taking some of this lovely dark and pushing some in and around, right up next to that light we just put in. Just put some more of that in there, some more movement of those colors in there. And you can determine how much you want to have in there. Okay, that's all up to you. So you have how much you want to do. If you want to break some of this up, grab just a little bit of the yellow green there and just break some of that up down like that. Break some of that movement up. add some of those colors and this is what makes a you know sometimes I'll take a green that's like this and I'll just add it right in here right into the center of that daisy there just like that and it just carries that color into there and that's the artistic bit of it you know that uh, you know that that is part of the the movement and what I look for in a painting you know and I'll, so I'll come in and do some of this stuff okay so I open this right back up in here because the last thing we want to do is we want to put a little B in there. So I want to come in and paint a little B for you here. If I can uh, find my little brush that I had here, there it is. Here it is. Okay, we'll paint the uh, little B here. And I'm going to take some black and I'll take it right down in here and I'll make a real soft little gray color. We'll just mix up some of this little green, little, little stuff in here. And uh, first we'll start with his little body here almost he gets a little bit of a well let's put him in a slightly different angle here let's push him let's push him back here just a bit here like this so his little body will come down arching down like this a bit okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to push in just a bit on that to destroy or what, what it is is I don't want to put you know when I'm pushing like this I'm making a nice a hard edge and I don't want him to be put in as an edge I want him to be put in kind of soft so I'll take a little more black here and we'll put on his head what will be his head here and again I will take a wipe my brush here and let's just soft and push in and, and destroy some of that and then I'll come back and reset it again just a little bit in some areas here so I I don't want him to be absolutely perfect now we'll come in we'll take some some Hansa yellow you can take a little bit of the raw the burnt sienna that I have right here we'll just model that because that black and the Hansa yellow make a green but the burnt sienna will will get rid of that. Let's just tap a, his little part of his body here, the yellow part of his body there, and um, then I'll come in, pick up a little bit of Hansa yellow, and I'll just go bang. And I'm going to leave him a little brighter than I do some of the other ones, just because he is uh, with all these brighter little flowers here. We'll just tap a little bit of that light in there. Now I'll pick up, now I'll come back in and, and add just a little more like edge, like maybe there, right there of his head, the edge of his head. Uh, I'll tap just a little bit like right in here to his body. So you pick up a little shape of his body. Sometimes I'll put in a, a little highlight or a little shine to his body. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pick up and put just a little bit there, like that, keeping him very casual. And I'll take this soft gray color here, and we'll pull out, and we'll pull out like that. Just a little bit of a gray here, into his, so we set his wing in, there like that, okay. And uh, let's set just a tiny bit of white with that yellow. 
just as a little bit of a shine, just the corner of our brush. We'll just give a little shine here and there with that. And we'll let that wing set up a bit and we'll just take a little dark right from the edge there. Back out, a little dark from the edge there, back out. So I like to darken a little bit where it, where it comes into the wing. And then I'll, I'll soften that wing back sometimes with my finger here. If it removes too easy, just let it tack up there for about five minutes or so. Let that color tack up just a bit. And then it comes up. That, that works pretty nice. Now, I'm going to take a, a little liner brush or a quill or something like that here. Some of this gray. Okay. And uh, I'll put just a little bit of an idea of... Uh, some of his, his uh, legs coming down here. His legs, his ideas of his legs coming out. And, you know, he has little feelers and stuff out to here. You can put the idea of a few of those in there. You know, if you want to get a little more, you know, into him, you can put a, a few little vein lines and stuff in his wings. But I usually don't. I usually leave him kind of soft like that and uh, maybe a little bit of a light gray there touch right just a little bit it's a little much so I'll push it back with a little light, a little dark but he's sitting on a light background so the dark here is really going to be your contrast for him okay so <clears throat> how much uh, you know you how much he shows up Depends on how dark you make this gray of his body here. So I might make just a touch more right in here. Right in there like that. It's a cute little bee there. And um, coming in for a landing at uh, the flowers. And we'll add just a little more movement right in there. Like that. Cute little set of wildflowers there. Fun little painting, fun to do, fast little painting to do. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we have some more, more bees. We have uh, little hummingbirds, little butterflies, all kinds of little flowers to do. Look for more of those lessons there on our Painted Simply and YouTube channels. Okay, till next time, thanks for joining me. I hope you had a great time watching this. I had a great fun time painting it with you. You take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.